It was I would like to call to order the council meeting of June tenth. Hey. Clerk could read the roll, please. Councilmember Dunbar. Councilmember Garza. Here. Councilmember Hussein. Here. Councilmember Jackson. Present. Vice President Spadafor. Present. Councilmember Spitzley. Councilmember Washington. Here. Council President Wood. Here. And um, Councilmember Dunbar and Spitzley, uh, we will be uh, dealing with an excused absence for both of those um, later on in the agenda. But they are excused. Oh, okay, so we are to meditation, the Pledge of Allegiance. Um, during our meditations, if we could remember um, Hazel Bethia. Uh, Hazel um, is not only a neighborhood uh, person, but has been working for over 25 years at uh, the Lansing Police Department on their front desk, five days a week, or four days a week as a volunteer from eight until one. Her son, um, just two weeks ago, uh, passed away. He had been dealing with cancer and um, passed away, and so um, she's dealing with that. So if we could remember Hazel in our uh, prayers at this time, I would appreciate it. Or is there anyone else we need to remember? Um, yes, Mayor Shore. Yes. Yes, thank you. Uh, with that, if we could rise. Thank you. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I understand we have a consideration of late items. Um, Vice President Spadafor. You know, Madam President, I move the suspension of council rule number nine in order to consider a late item. Um, it is the resolution for the uh, fireworks license for the Lansing Lugnuts Melrose Pyrotechnics Inks for the rain date for July 5th, 2019. I have a motion to, sp to suspend. Are there any questions? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye, opposed, uh, passes um, unanimously. And we will take that up at the proper time under referrals. Okay, we are next to comments by council members and the city clerk. Uh, I, I think we have a special ceremony. Sorry, I missed that, special ceremony. That's okay, not a problem. Um, if we could have the members uh, that are here for the G Juneteenth, Juneteenth celebration, please come up in front.
Excuse me. We got everybody in? Okay. Got the mayor here? All right. Um, it's that time of year again. It is uh, the Juneteenth um, celebration. Uh, this is a opportunity for us to remember our history, not only across the nation, but here in our community. And uh, we have a resolution um, honoring the um, uh, Juneteenth um, celebration and all the activities that are going on. And with that, Madam, or, Madam, <laughs> Mr. Vice President, I would like to move the uh, resolutions, please. Uh, it's been moved by President Wood uh, to adopt the resolution. Is there any discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion carries. And with that, I'd like to give you the resolution. And um, again, thank you for the tremendous amount of education that you do during this period of time, the celebration, the joy that we have in getting to know each other. And so thank you for that. With that, I'll turn it over to the mayor. Thank you. Well, as the council president said, it's that time of year uh, for me and in the last uh, six years, that means it's that time of year when Marilyn Plummer is crazy. <laughs> um, but we love it. We love it. Um, she is, this is, this is her favorite thing and her favorite time of the year. And, um, and it's so much fun to watch. Um, it's such a great celebration. There's so much going on here in the city of Lansing. We, you know, we, we like to think that we were the leaders, and we are the leaders in Juneteenth. You know, this committee behind us and, and others predating them created the first holiday in the state of Michigan. We are the, um, the oldest celebration in the state of Michigan. Um, we're very proud of the efforts uh, of Juneteenth and remembering that and being able to educate people every year. When I was in the legislature, every year we would come and somebody, somebody usually uh, on the other side of the aisle would come over and say, I didn't know that, and I'm really glad that, that this committee uh, from Lansing was, was here. So we're very proud, I'm very proud to, to be standing up here with all of these fine individuals who really do work so hard. This is a working committee. Um, and I'm looking forward to, for all those watching, don't forget parade 10 a.m. on Saturday. Um, we will be in that parade, we're excited. Uh, there's a ball game uh, that, that night, uh, Friday night. Uh, I get to throw out the first pitch, which don't judge. Um, <laughs> Uh, and then there's all kinds of great activities uh, at St. Joseph Park, so we're looking forward to it. We also, we have a, a proclamation. Um, I'm going to give it and then take it back because you get it again over the weekend. <laughs> um, but uh, similarly to council, we put all the really cool things I just mentioned. But uh, now, therefore, I, Andy Shore, mayor of the city of Lansing, by the power vested in me, do hereby proclaim June 13th through 15th as Juneteenth days in Lansing. I urge all citizens to join me in celebrating this holiday commemorating the emancipation of slaves in the United States. Congratulations. Thank you all for your work. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Carol and council members. It's our pleasure to represent, um, it's my pleasure to have such a Wonderful committee, we have grown, so we have the full effect behind me. And um, we certainly couldn't be more grateful for the support of our leaders, uh, certainly um, the city. We are the capital city, and we're really proud that we hail as the longest serving celebration 26 years. That's something to be proud about. So we have a lot going on this year. We just want to share with you just a few of those things, history, as well as, again, uh, remembering the dates uh, that we're celebrating. When I am finished with that quick little summary, I am going to ask the members to introduce themselves, what committees they represent, and tell you what's the important thing that they're working on as far as committee members. But first and foremost, we want you to know, of course, it's been stated what the uh, history of Juneteenth is, and we're going to hear a little bit more about that correlation. I want to share with you, as the capital city, we are having a luncheon at City Hall on Thursday, June 13th at 11 o'clock, and all are welcome to attend. Um, being the capital city, we could not be more elated to have our leaders, local, state, and congressional, be supportive of the celebration. So at 5.30 on Thursday the 13th, we will be at the Lansing Community College uh, to accommodate our kickoff opening ceremony, again at 5.30, 
where the Lieutenant Governor uh, Garland Gilchrist is our speaker, and the governor will be joining us. You're welcome to join us too. It's an open celebration, so we hope that you will. With that being said, I am going to uh, ask my committee members to come forward, introduce themselves, and share with you the committee that they're working on and what important fact that you should know. And I'm gonna start with Chaplain PJ. Thank you, Sister Marilyn. I'm on the speakers committee, and my specialty is in giving to Juneteenth the history of or the connection between watch night services and Juneteenth, formerly called the night before the eve before freedom. Uh, the watch night services are held across the country on the 31st of the year where there is singing and some dancing and some praising and some thankfulness for, uh, for freedom. Hi, I'm Marcus Jefferson. I'm with the Entertainment Committee, and we have a wonderful, powerful lineup. We've got the Hip Hop Academy, we've got jazz, blues, soul, and a lot of gospel, a lot of wonderful gospel. As a matter of fact, we have four of the members that was in a competition we did back in March called Mid-Michigan Gospel Best, so stay tuned, because you're gonna be excited. I'm Angela Matthews, and I'm with the Communications and Media um, Committee with Juneteenth. We make sure that the atmosphere is charged. We make sure that Facebook is blazing, that you hear about this anywhere and everywhere, television, radio. So that is what we do, and hopefully you will be out to see us. Hi, everyone. I'm Rhonda Bishop. I'm also on the Communications Committee. Uh, right now, we also oversee the website, which has more information. You can go to LansingJuneteenthCelebration.org. Hi, I'm Greta McKaney Trice, and we, Kim Turner? Yes. <laughs> work on the parade committee, and we work to get people involved to drive or ride or walk. And we have a lot of people coming to celebrate Juneteenth in the parade at 10 a.m. on Saturday. And we have the Benton Harbor High School Band coming also. Hi, I'm Natasha Atkinson, and I am a volunteer and also helping organize volunteers. So uh, reach out to us on either the website or the Facebook page. Um, if you are interested in volunteering, we could use your help. Thank you. Hi, my name is Lori Littlejohn, and I'm the softball community committee. I um, recruit, and this year um, we're excited. Our team is excited, the Juneteenth um, softball team. It's excited because we will be playing against Fort Water and Light. So that should be interesting. So come on out Friday, um, June 14th, um, 545 p.m., and like the mayor said, he's gonna throw the first pitch. You don't wanna miss it. <laughs> Hi everyone, my name's Alicia Drain and I'm on the subcommittee health fair and we have a tent that'll be um, available on Saturday from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. and under the tent we have a lot of people. Um, just to name a few, Susan, B Susan Homan, um, we also have the Big Impact, MSU Pink, um, Community Mental Health, yes, and Ingham County, just to name a few. Hi, I'm Bonnie Jones, and I'm also on the Health Committee, and what is so wonderful is we had so many that we had to turn people back. So that just shows the emphasis that we have had in the community, and we wanna thank you all for participating and for giving us your, your whatever you gave to us, we really appreciate it. <laughs> Thank you. Hello, I'm Susan Henderson and I'm the facilities coordinator. So um, the park will open up on Friday the 14th at three o'clock and then Saturday at 11 o'clock. 
So come on out and enjoy. Hopefully the weather will be yeah. good. Yeah. We pray, and but you never know, so. <laughs> Hello, I'm Marcia Plummer. I am over the vendors um, committee. Um, come on out, we're gonna have a great time. Um, we got lots of food and uh, lots of vendors. Come on out and have some fun. Good evening, I'm Deborah Plummer with the Education Subcommittee. And I'm Mary Gibbs with the Education Subcommittee. This year we were pleased to um, award uh, six awards this year for the Juneteenth Essay Award competition. And let me just share with you the purpose of what we do. Uh, the purpose of the Juneteenth Essay uh, Contest is to educate our youth on Juneteenth history and get students involved in research, historical research as well as improving essay writing uh, skills that lead to better SAT application. Uh, along with scholarship and grant submission requests, we really try to prepare the student for upper uh, or higher education levels. And just want to share with you the winners of the essay contest so you can see what brilliant minds we have here in the capital city. Starting with category one, our first place winner was Christiana Hughes. Our second place winner was Natalia Miller. And honorable mention was Stephanie Brown. I'm gonna ask you to please forgive me if I mess up anybody's name. So in category two, the first place is Noel Hampton Yarbrough. Second place, Elijah Larkin. And honorable mention, Alana Bronson. Thank you. Again, we, in closing, we want to thank you, thank the leadership of our city, our mayor, our city council, certainly each and every one. We want to leave with you a reminder, which is our invitation and a flyer of the event, and we hope that we will see you somewhere in the Juneteenth celebration on the days of Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, the 13th, 14th, and 15th, and thank you again. labor of love as we know. Oh, I know, I know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, thank you. Thank you so much, thank you. I'm good, I'm good, thank you. Good to see you. Okay. You haven't been to the house lately. I know. What's I know. happening with that? <laughs> I'm telling you, there's just been so many things, but I will get okay, there. I will on. get there. Thank you so much for oh, the time. Yes. I appreciate it. Not a problem. Thank you. Thank you. Good to see you again. <laughs> and you too. Uh, I'll give that hug to Michael. So okay. I got to. Okay. <laughs> yes. Good hug. Oh, thank you. Thank you.
With that, then, Mr. Clerk, we are to comments by council member and the city clerk. Uh, this is uh, time for council member comments. Are there council member comments at this time? Council member Hussein. Yeah, I first want to thank everybody that came out to our constituent contact meeting this past Saturday, but I also need to include a bit of an apology. We had a location mix up in terms of reservation um, and so in, in availability. We had to uh, change course at the last minute uh, and move from the Alfreda Schmidt Southside Community Center over to Fire Station 6. Um, we did what we could. We put signs up on the on the doors. A good friend of mine, William Hubble, stayed behind to redirect for 15 to 20 minutes, but my understanding is that some folks um, did not get the news, uh, and so I really do apologize. Uh, with that being said, we do recess for the month of July. Uh, we will be back at it August 10th from 10 to 12 noon. Uh, and again, the Alfreda Schmidt Southside Community Center will not be available, so we will be meeting at Fire Station 6. I believe that's 5135 Pleasant Grove Road. Um, the other piece is that we are pulling um, from tonight's agenda Z8 2018. That's a uh, rezone request from F Commercial and J Parking Districts to G2 Wholesale District for 5400 South Cedar Street, uh, better known as the OK Mart um, on Cedar. We vetted this today in development and planning. Uh, we had the applicant and a number of stakeholders on hand. Uh, there was a bit of a mix up um, on their end in terms of um, final vetting uh, and, and approval before, um, before city council. Uh, and that was due to some change in development and planning uh, meetings. We were meeting the first and third Mondays um, due to some of our outside boards and commission responsibilities. We changed that to the second and fourth. So we would have been looking at this in development and planning. Um, I believe it would be, it would have been June 17th, which meant we would have been looking at it uh, before city council for final approval June 24th. They thought we were still on that schedule. Uh, so there were a number of individuals um, from their team that were not able to be here tonight. They did want to be here uh, for um, final discussion uh, and, and approval uh, or denial. So we um, uh, did we did agree to move that to June 24th. With that being said, what we're going to do is still take public comment for anybody that actually wants to discuss that uh, particular agenda item tonight. Thank you. Are there other council member comments? Other council member comments? Seeing none, um, Mr. Clerk. Okay, thank you. Um, Chief Deputy Clerk Brian Jackson covering for Clerk Swope tonight. <laughs> And I want to share with the council and the public that we have completed another uh, pilot today in uh, election result auditing, in which over 300 randomly selected ballots were confirmed to be tabulated correctly. And we had election officials, not just from Michigan, but across the country in attendance uh, to learn these new procedures over in our um, drill hall over at uh, South Washington. And uh, this is the gold standard for election security. And we're proud to be partnering with the Secretary of State and fellow clerks across uh, mid-Michigan um, to help make that happen. So it was a, it was a very day, busy day in the clerk's office. Um, secondly, the applications to vote from home has been sent. Uh, they were sent last week out uh, for those who are already on that automatic application list, um, formerly known as the permanent absentee list. And there's still plenty of time to request a ballot to be mailed to your home. In fact, uh, ballots will not be in available until Thursday, June 27th um, for early voting. And then uh, next, we're on to community event announcements. Okay. Are there ahead? any community announcements? Okay. Seeing none. Okay. Then we are to speaker registration for public comment on legislative matters. You have uh, one more minute to sign in on the blue sheet. If you want to go back and grab that, uh, we have it on the agenda is a, a, a um, hearing, the noise special permit, rehabbing Martin Luther King Boulevard from Pleasant Grove Road North to 550 feet south of Victor Avenue for work on weekdays and weekends during the construction season. But I understand we'll be holding that Twice, hearing, yeah. hearing again. So if you miss it now, you'll get another chance. And again, if you want to uh, speak, sign in on the blue sheet. And next, we're on to uh, Mayor Comments. Mayor Shore, do you have any comments for us this evening? I have a few. All right, thank you. I'd like to talk about some of the cool things that went on in Lansing over the last week. So um, if you uh, missed it, we had a very cool Dapper Dads event for the Sparrow Foundation. Um, I was probably the least of the Dapper Dads, but it was fun anyway. Um, it was a good time. We raised a lot of money for, for the Sparrow Foundation. Um, on Friday, if you weren't there, I Love the 90s rocked the stadium. 
Um, it was a lot of fun. We had a really, uh, it was impressive. The crowd was great. It was about four, four and a half thousand people. Um, so that was a, a lot of energy. Uh, and then the next morning on Saturday, we had the mayor's river walk and run. Uh, it was hot, and yet Councilman Jackson still smoked everybody, even if it wasn't his personal record time. He smoked us all. Um, we had lots of, of folks from the city there. Um, our parks director ran, our chief of staff ran, uh, my wife ran, uh, our public service director ran. It was really a, a great effort. We probably had a few hundred people there, I think about 100 runners, and then the rest walking. And um, we had people who had never been on the river, river trail before who were really excited and impressed. And uh, that's also because the night before was also Art Path where we um, announced 20 different pieces of art on the river trail. So if you haven't gotten out on the river trail and it's not raining any longer, uh, I hope people will get out. Um, in the week coming up, we have a lot of things coming. We've got on Wednesday the city's uh, Ramadan dinner. Uh, the city of Lansing and East Lansing will hold that at 5.30, I believe it's at the Lansing Center. Um, we have the Moores Park uh, is the leading off with the concert series. So we have our concerts every Wednesday and uh, the first one starts in Moores Park. On Thursday, the, the Grand Concert Series kicks off with some jazz music. Um, and then on Saturday, we heard about the, uh, the Juneteenth African American Parade. We also have our, uh, our statewide Pride Parade on Saturday. So the Juneteenth Parade is at 10, and the Pride Parade is at noon. And finally, I'd like to wish everybody a happy Father's Day on Sunday, and hope everybody gets a little bit of time to relax and enjoy their families. Thank you. Um, Mr. Mr. Mayor might have missed it, but did you talk about the mobile food pantry? I did not. I missed, we also have a mobile food pantry at St. Kaz, uh, St. Casimir, um, Saturday at uh, nine. Um, so thank you. I, you know, I have my list and I missed that one. So okay. thank you. I think you reminded me about that a few times ago also. Thank you. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, any other comments? Seeing none. Okay, then we're on public comment, legislative matters. As I said earlier, legislative matter consists of the consent agenda, um, but we have pulled the Z8 from, uh, from this evening, but people could still speak on it. And then the noise special permit for rehabbing Martin Luther King Boulevard from Pleasant Grove Road north to, to 550 feet south of Victor Avenue. And uh, Council Member Washington. Um, thank you, Madam President. I really don't have anything to add to this. This is in consideration of the noise special permit to rehab Martin Luther King Jr. Boulevard. As the clerk said, from uh, Pleasant Grove Road north to 550 feet south of Victor Avenue. This is for work to be done on weekdays and weekends during the 2019 construction season. Um, we ask for these noise and special permits because our construction season is short in the state of Michigan. Okay, with that, our first speaker is? Loretta Stanaway, and our second speaker is Mary Reynolds, and that's, that concludes. First, on behalf of the Friends of Lansing's Historic Cemeteries, I would like to thank the General Services uh, Committee for their vote this morning. We had applied jointly with the Eastside Neighborhood Organization for community funding to help uh, put us over the top on our goal to raise $21,000 in order to put markers on the graves of 60 boys who passed away in the uh, custody of the state of Michigan at the boys' training school site. Uh, some of those graves have gone unmarked as long as 149 years and I think it's, it's about time they get markers. So we've uh, worked very diligently. We had raised $19,137 to date, and we look forward to your vote on that this evening. Um, regarding the fireworks, um, just a suggestion. I don't know if there's even time to do something like this uh, so quickly, but it might be an idea for in the future um, what about having ambassadors, volunteer ambassadors that could go around uh, and answer hotline calls from people with complaints about uh, fireworks being used at inappropriate times or ways and letting the ambassadors uh, write tickets along the lines of what handicapped parking personnel do. 
Um, and then the last thing is that I support the decision of the planning board and the zoning administrator and the planning committee to recommend denial of the uh, zoning request for the Kmart facilities. Um, I just don't think that the U-Haul is an appropriate use of that property, and I would rather see the city wait for the right property uh, proposal to come along at the right time that's going to put that site to a more robust and productive use that will generate more traffic in and out and serve the public better. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Mary. Well, hello, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Mary Reynolds. Yes. This is my town. I tell you that every week that I show up. Uh, I want to say that in listening to everybody tonight, you had a lot of very valid things told to you. Um, I'm anxious to hear the rest of the meeting to see what else is told to you. You want to remember when you, on the Kmart property, you want to remember we're a town with a lot of apartments, a lot of rooms, and not everybody's got money to drive a ride a bus or drive a car. But if you've got Kmart, you can go down there and you can get what you need, just like you do Family Dollar. And so judge it cautiously and think of some of those people that are moving into all these apartments that are coming into our city and downtown in our city. They're very important. So thank you very much. Thank you. Our final speaker. And our final speaker is Jeff Azeldo. We, ha we have one signed up, so one of you may speak. You, you have three minutes. Well, hi. <clears throat> We're not aware of the political, so that's why our um, we just come before you. Um, we had had a, a dispute about brush and such, um, mostly that was the main cause. And uh, I had gotten wounded on that motorcycle accident, so I was kind of offline. And um, we had talked with Zach Driver, and we had agreed on the phone that we would have it done on the 6th of October. And I've got that written down on our home calendar. It's like a diary that she keeps, because she writes on all the stuff. And so when we showed up that day and the cleaning crew was already there, we were in total shock because we had intended to finish it. And you may ask why I waited to the last day is I was, I, I was just off of crutches. I, you know, it was incredibly uh, uncomfortable. And it had been mentioned earlier today that, you know, maybe we could have hired somebody or whatever, but we're here alone and uh, we didn't have the money to hire anybody. We did the best we could. We took care of the whole front. We did the side yard. We were in process. And we got this bill for $4,200. And it works out that that's on the bill. They charge $150 an hour and to clean brush out of a yard. And that's what you would earn as an anesthesiologist or an orthodontist or an underwater welder to approach that pay. And when we figured it out this morning, you guys remember, it was like 250 bucks an hour. And I was just like, we're willing to pay, but can't you help us with that? That's, it's a drop in the bucket for you guys. That's like financial hardship. We were a single income family and we're kind of in shock because it was a misunderstanding with Zach Driver and myself. We can't do anything about that. So that's why I came here to tell you that this was an honest mistake. We have always maintained the house. You can see in the records. We're, we're the people that are trying to do it right. We're not people out there illegally renting our house. So we have striven from the beginning to stay everything up to code, which it is. And I'm just saying, please help us. $4,200, $4, even on a payment plan, that's, we're, 
I appreciate you letting me talk, and I understand whatever you guys decide is what we're going to do. So thank you for your consideration. Thank you. And that concludes our public speakers. We're next on to the consent agenda. Uh, Vice President Spadafore. Madam President, I'll be pulling every, all items, everything under item one except for D as we've already taken care of that, item two, item three, item four, item five, and item six from the consent agenda. So on the consent agenda are just the tributes? Is that what no. you said? Oh, all right. There's nothing on the consent agenda. All right, thank you. Um, so that takes us to all council members. Council member Garza, uh, you're down for A, B, and C. So we'd speak to each one separately and then we'll vote on them. Yes. Thank you, Madam President. So uh, I have a tribute here in recognition of South Lansing Business Association. Uh, the Tuesday Toolmen began in Kalamazoo in 1995 and the program has been active in Lansing since 2010. The program is volunteer driven and promotes a quality of life for seniors, low income and dis disabled individuals qualifying for assistance. So let it be resolved that Lansing City Council hereby wishes to express its appreciation to the Tuesday Toolmen for their commitment to the Lansing community. Congratulations on being chosen as the recipient of the 2019 Community Service Award from the South Lansing Business Association. We wish you continued success. With that, I'd like to move the resolution. I have a motion on the resolution. Are there any questions or concerns? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye, opposed, same sign, thank you. Okay, we have a tribute here to uh, the Gillespie Group. So let it be resolved, Lansing City Council hereby wishes to express its appreciation to the Gillespie Group for their commitment to the Lansing community. Congratulations on being chosen as a recipient of the 2019 Business of the Year Award from the South Lansing Business Association. We wish you continued success. With that, I'd like to move the resolution. We have a motion on the resolution. Are there any questions or concerns? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Passes unanimously. Council Member Garza. And last but not least, we have a tribute here in recognition of the South Lansing Business Association. Uh, Lolo Robinson earned a master's degree in public relations from Michigan State University and gradu graduated cum laude from Central Michigan University with a degree in administration in addition Lolo is a founding member of the MSU College of Communication, Arts, and Science Department of Advertising and Public Relations Professional Ad Advisory Board. And whereas, uh, let it be resolved, Lansing City Council hereby wishes to express its appreciation to Lolo Robinson for her commitment to the Lansing community. Congratulations on being chosen as the recipient of the 2019 Alfreda Schmidt Lifetime Achievement Award from the South Lansing Business Association. We wish you continued success. With that, I'd like to move the resolution. I have a motion before us. Are there any questions or concerns? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Passes unanimously. Next, we're on to community and development and planning. Council Member Hussein. Sure, this is a special land use request to allow for a church in the F Commercial District. Um, I'm sorry, to allow a church in uh, NF Commercial District at 900 Southland Avenue, Suite 918. Uh, the applicant in this case is Holiday Park. Uh, again, the purpose would be to allow for a church. That church is the Church of the Amazing Grace. They currently have uh, 20 parishioners. They are led by Pastor Mary Allen. Uh, they are currently at 6810 South Cedar, uh, but they're looking to relocate and they desire to impact change in an area that could really use um, some positive presence. Um, in terms of the development and planning um, uh, kind of investigation, uh, we did speak with the zoning administrator. She is recommending approval. Uh, we also um, uh, had a report submitted by the planning board. They're supporting uh, unanimously. Um, and the, some of the reasons referenced is so that parking is adequate. Churches are allowed uh, per special land use in commercial, uh, commercially zoned districts if uh, the use is determined to be most appropriate. Uh, and this particular commercial building has, has really had kind of a, um, a, a history that's been detrimental to the, uh, to the adjacent neighborhood, to the adjacent, to the adjacent business district. Um, they've had some illegal gambling establishments. Uh, there's been uh, some after-hour um, uh, entities, uh, if you will, uh, and so you're, you're finally seeing some, some positive reactivation and repurposing of that building. We have a boxing gym in that area. Um, at this point, we also have a laundromat uh, and with the church, um, it seems as if we might be moving forward. With that being said, we did have a public hearing on May 13th. Uh, we did not receive any comments against the SLU, uh, so I would move the SLU for um, 900 South, Southland Avenue, Suite 918. 
We have a motion before us. Are there any questions or concerns? Council Member Spadafore. I should have asked this uh, further along in the process, but well, how does this affect the tax, the property tax for that building? It would be just, well, it all depends um, on how, if they're, they're leasing it, uh, then it wouldn't affect it. Okay. If they are purchasing that unit, then that unit could be kind of minimized and then the rest would pay the property tax. All right, thank you. And, and that was discussed in committee and it is a lease and so it will not impact. Yeah. Okay, um, any okay. other questions? Council Member uh, Jackson. Um, Council Min Hussein, can you speak to the recommendation again from our, like was there any rationale behind that? From the zoning administrator? Sure, she recommended based on, again, SLUs uh, for churches are allowed uh, in commercially um, zone districts, uh, again, if it is the most appropriate use. And she really spoke to, uh, when you look at the parking, the fact that the parking is adequate, uh, when you look at the, um, the kind of the historical use of the building uh, and whether, whether or not this would be an improvement um, on some of that historical use. Uh, and so that was part of her recommendation. And then the planning board actually took a look at um, the, the impact on the adjacent area and they believe that this was an appropriate use. Any other questions? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, passes unanimously. Okay, now we move on to Committee on General Services. Council Member Washington. Thank you, Madam President. The first thing we have before us is the resolution, excuse me, the resolution for the fireworks display license, Great Lake Fireworks for the City of Lansing's Independence Day celebration. All of the required signatures have been obtained supporting the application for this display license. We're um, doing this as a late item so that we can have this passed before um, the date of the display. So with that, I would move the resolution. Uh, this is not the late item, this is the, the late item has to do with... Sorry about that. That's okay, <laughs> not a problem. It's still fireworks, but it's not this particular one. And this is for the July 4th with the July 5th rain date. Um, yes, Council Member Spadafore. I, I do have a question then, because the late item actually just speaks to the July 5th And And that's date. for the lug nuts. There are two fireworks um, displays. One is for the city and one is for the lug nuts. And the lug nuts did not have a rain day in theirs when it was originally passed for the fourth. Okay, all right. Okay, with that, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, passes unanimously. Councilmember Washington. Thank you, Madam President. The next thing we have before us is a resolution for community funding for the Friends of Lansing Historic Summit cemeteries and the east side neighborhood organization this is for cutting the 60 markers for the boys that died at the um boys training school that is currently um the property now is where the east village housing um, subdivision is up until this point these boys have had no identity in the um, cemetery um, I can move the resolution, but because I am the vice president of the East Side Neighborhood Organization, I need to ask to be recused. Um, we first have a motion um, to recuse Council Member um, Washington. The applicants for this are the Friends of um, the Lansing Historic Cemeteries and the ENO East Side Neighborhood Organization. So um, uh, even though there's not any financial gain from this, um, she's um, asking to be recused so that it doesn't appear to be any improprieties. So with that, we have a motion. All those in favor of recusal say aye. 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 Opposed? All right, and um, now with that, um, I will pass the gavel to Council to Vice President Spadafore, um, and I would move the um, community use fund. All right, the 
Resolution has been moved by Council Member Wood. Any discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion carries. Yes. Okay. Five to five to one recusal. <laughs> All right, uh, Council Member Washington. Thank you, Madam President. The next thing we have before us is the claim dis is the claim disposition claim sixteen eighty Jeffrey N. On Zaldua for $4,172 in trash fees at 1737 Robertson Street. Um, Mr. and Mrs. Anzaldua did come before the Committee of General Services. Um, we had quite a lengthy discussion. Um, he did indeed talked to the committee about having been in a motorcycle accident shortly before the initial notification and that there were some extensions. They um, made an assumption that the week deadline was from the date of the conversation, but it was actually enforced as a week after the initial due date. Um, there, we did have a discussion regarding the um, expense of what this is and again we reminded folks that we are not a trash removal service in the city of Lansing and there are several things that we have to take into consideration. We have an administrative fee that we have to put on for all of the city workers and the time that they put into writing these, um, these um, trash things up there were uh, five crew members on the site for two hours, um, so that is what 16. the- 16. 16, 16 hours, and it was Total. five crew members for three hours is actually what right. it was. Um, they did believe that this was extreme, but um, the claimants also confirmed at the time that there was a renter who um, abandoned the property. They did tell us that currently their adult son is actually living in that rental, so they did have an adult son who could have helped them. Um, the, uh, the 16 hours, five people with three hours, um, Mr. Anzaldua did appeal for leniency because they said it would be a um, cost, um, cost prohibitive for them. The, um, and here's the other things that go into the fees that we have to remember. We have the fees for the actual cleanup, and it is expensive because the work is, um, the workers, they are yelled at, it's a dirty job, they, um, there's a lot that they have to take into account when they go onto these properties. We also are charged for, for from Granger for hauling the trash away. We're also um, charged for any chipping of wood that has to take place on these properties. And there are other fees that go into this. So it isn't just a matter of people coming in, loading up their um, truck and driving off. There are a lot of things that are in consideration of this. Although I absolutely can sympathize with, with, the, um, with the hardship, I also have to remember that the law is the law, and we do have to take into consideration all that goes into this. And at the end of the day, it is the responsibility of the property owner to ensure that their property is in good order. So with that, I would move the resolution to deny the claim. I have a motion to on the table. Are there any questions? Council Member Garza. Thank you, Madam President. I guess my question is, is since they uh, first initially received the notice and they asked for the extensions. Did they make any uh, efforts to clean the property? Has any, was there any uh, um, uh, I guess was there any efforts to clean the property prior to uh, these pictures? Uh, I believe from what um, Mr. Sanford said that they um, they were given two extensions and there was and, and again as um, the claimant had said, he had been in the hospital, so there hadn't been anything that had been done yet. So any other questions? Seeing none, all those in favor of denying the claim say aye. Aye, opposed? All right, that's um, five, um, five one. Uh, Council Member Washington.
Excuse me. The next thing we have before us is the resolution setting a public hearing in consideration of noise special permit, the Department of Public Service to allow for work on the resurfacing of Miller from Cedar Street to Aurelius Road and Turner Street from Douglas Avenue to Randolph Street, 8 a.m. until 8 p.m. on Miller Road between July 8, 2019 through August 4, 2019 and on Turner Street between July 15, 2019 through August 18, 2019. With that, I would move the resolution to set the public hearing. And the public hearing is for the 24th. I was going to ask that. It's not yeah. up here. Thank you. It, the, the public 24th. hearing is for the 24th and then um, looking for passage on July 8th. Are there any questions or concerns? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Passage unanimously. Councilmember Washington. Okay, Madam President. Um, what we have before us now is the resolution to set the public hearing in consideration of noise special permit rehabbing Martin Luther King Jr. Boulevard from Pleasant Grove Road North to 550 feet south of Victor Avenue for work on weekdays and weekends during the 2019 construction season. The public hearing would be on June 24th with passage on um, July 8th. With that, I'd move the resolution. Um, Councilmember Washington, this is the one that <laughs> MDOT asked us to redo because they didn't get their notice out uh, properly. So we'll have the public hearing on the 24th and pass it on the 24th. Oh, okay. Thank you. So this particular property, even though this isn't deja vu, we will actually be doing two public hearings on this. Okay. Are there any questions? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? All right. Um, Passed unanimously. That takes us to public safety. And Councilmember Hussein. Sure. So we have uh, the setting of two show cause hearings uh, uh, in consideration of make safe or demolish orders. Uh, there is some light documentation in your supporting documents folder if you guys want to follow along. Uh, very quickly, as it pertains to 3005 Herrick Drive, uh, the original red tag date was September 1st, 2017. Uh, the state equalized value is 38,000. Estimated cost of repair is 78,000. The demo board met on February February 28th, 2019, uh, to consider the make or uh, make safe or demolish orders. Uh, the property owner was a no-show for that meeting. Uh, the order stemming from that meeting was a 60-day uh, make safe or demolish uh, order, as this is not a fire damage structure. Uh, public safety did meet on June 6th. Again, the property owner was a no-show. Uh, and <clears throat> at this time, no uh, permits have been pulled. Uh, so I believe the show cause hearing in the resolution that states June 24th. Uh, so I would move the resolution to set the uh, show cause hearing for June 24th at 7 p.m. We have a motion. Are there any questions or concerns? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Uh, passes unanimously. Uh, Councilmember Hussein. All right, so this show cause hearing is, uh, or the setting of the show cause hearing would be for 410 South Francis. Uh, with regards to this particular uh, property, the owner is Sunnyside of the Street LLC. Uh, the Original red tag date was June 2nd, 2018. Uh, state equalized value is 15,600, and the estimated cost of repairs is $63,095. Uh, demo board met on March 28th uh, to consider the orders. Uh, the property owner was a no-show. Uh, the order stemming from that meeting was a 30-day. This is a fire damage structure, uh, which allows us to move forward with a 30-day make safe or demolish order. Uh, at this time, again, none of the required permits have been pulled. Uh, and the property owner is delinquent on taxes from winter 2017 to present. We believe that they're essentially walking away from the property. Uh, with that being said, I would move the resolution to set the public hearing, I'm sorry, the show cause hearing uh, for 410 South Francis for June 24th at 7 p.m. We have a motion. Are there any questions or concerns? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Passes um, unanimously. Okay, that takes us on to the Committee on Public Services. Um, Vice President Spadafore. The Committee on Public Services met to discuss the resolution that would set a public hearing in consideration of the special assessment for snow and ice removal for this winter. Um, as many of you know, sometimes some homeowners do not quite meet the uh, standard for removing snow and ice, and the city sends out a crew to take care of that for them, and then they are assessed on that. They then have an opportunity to appeal, and if they do not appeal, 
Um, they are assessed that, and it goes on their tax rolls. It will not make it in the summer tax rolls. Again, this year, it'll be on their winter tax, so it does lead to some confusion for some folks because they get taxed on last winter's snow removal before it's even snowed again, but um, that's the process that we've got in front of us. The public hearing will be July 8th at 7 p.m. here in, this, in the chambers, so I would move the resolution. I have a motion on the resolution. Are there any questions? Um, I guess, uh, Vice President Spadafore, my question would be, is there a problem with them getting us this information by May so that you can have the public hearing because they they have until June 1st to be put on the tax rolls? I could not answer that question at this time. Okay. Is that something when the committee meets with public service over this again that you could find out you know where the timeline is because I can see how it would be confusing for people yes they'll be meet, they'll be coming in during the appeals process and, and we'll again make that strongly recommended that they get that to us before May so we can we can do okay. that time. all right um, and that's also for the 24th Double check the resolution said July 8th. July 8th. All right. Thank you. I'm sorry. I didn't hear that. All right. Are there any other questions? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Passes unanimously. That takes us to the Committee of the Whole. Vice President Spadafore. I would move the resolution for the reappointment of Jason Wilkes on the at large. As an at-large representative of the Board of Public Service, James Tischler as a business owner representative to the Downtown Lansing Inc. Board. By Brian McGrain is the City of Lansing representative to the Local Development Finance Authority. Elaine Barr to the Michigan Avenue Corridor Improvement Authority. And Zoe Alstrom as an at-large member of the Park Board. And these are all reappointments. Are there any questions? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Passes unanimously. That takes us to the Committee on Ways and Means. Vice President Spadafore. And President, um, the Chair of the Committee, uh, Councilmember Spitzley, is traveling this week, um, so I will do the best I can here. We met uh, briefly, had two grant applications to consider in the Committee of Ways and Means. One was, a, or, I'm sorry, grant acceptance, rather. One was a scrap tire market development grant from the Department of Environmental Quality. Um, this would give us $283,550 for resurfacing of Mount Hope Avenue from Aurelius to Fidelity, combined with the city project to pave Mount Hope from Fidelity to East Lansing city limits. Um, we're gonna try a pilot uh, material where they use uh, crumb rubber modified asphalt to resurface Mount ha Hope Avenue from Aurelius, Aurelius to Fidelity, basically uh, crunching up tires and things like that to go in the asphalt. It doesn't extend the life of the road any longer than traditional asphalt, but it um, reuses some material that would otherwise be landfilled. Um, the city match on this is $283,000.550, but we get the road paved and for the same cost as paving it uh, with normal asphalt. So pretty good, pretty good deal from MDOT, or I'm sorry, from uh, DEQ. So I would move the resolution in accepting the grant. Are there any questions? My question would be, is there any match funds? Do we have any match funds for that grant? Yes. And how much are the match funds? It's just the same. It's 200. They're paying 200? for 50% of the, of the okay. construction. The construction is more expensive to do that road. We are doing the road anyway. So we get a grant to, to try this pilot project out. All right. And was there any discussion about the, if it didn't meet the um, supposed um, length of, of, um, we didn't dive into the warranties on this one. Okay. All right. So in other words, there's always the possibility in five years we could be having to put out some additional money to redo it again. That was not articulated in public service. They said okay. it does not extend the life any longer. It just says they have about the same expectation. It's not a brand new product. It's just something we haven't done okay. a lot, apparently. Thank you. Are there any other questions? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Passes unanimously. Uh, Vice President Spadafore. Yes, this is another um, 
grant application or grant acceptance. This one from the Bryn Justice, As Justice Assistant Grant, you know, commonly known as JAG for the Police Department, to receive $117,000 for um, purchasing computer equipment for a real-time crime center. Mm -hmm. Of those funds, 11,018 are reserved for Ingham County and the city will receive $106,630. Um, we'll be using uh, this to purchase technology in our real real time crime center, which we talked a lot about during the budget process. There is no city match for this. It's just a straight up grant for the city. Are there any questions on this? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye, opposed, passes unanimously. Thank okay. you. Okay, next we are to ordinance for introduction. I'll read the record into the ordinance. Um, Read the ordinance into the record. Ordinance of the City of Lansing, Michigan to amend the Lansing Codified Ordinance by amending Chapter 1615, Section 1615.02 and 1615.06 to provide for the regulation of days and times permitting the unlicensed ignition, discharge, and use of consumer fireworks and the penalties for violation of the regulations and to conform the regulation and penalties to the requirements of Michigan 2018 Public Act 635 regarding local government ordinances. It was introduced by Council Member Washington, read by the first time by his title, and referred to the Committee on General Services. Council Member Washington, and we do have law here if you want to. Thank you, them. thank you, Madam President. First, um, before I address this, where online can people find the changes to our ordinance if they want to look at it before the public hearing? Uh, this would be on the clerk site, but we can, uh, we'll also make sure that we have it on our website under documents. We'll have Sherry put that, put that up on there uh, on Tuesday. Okay, thank you very much. So this will be on the city council website under documents um, so that folks can get a good handle on what is happening before the public hearing. What we have before us is, um, the setting of the public hearing for June 24th regarding the amendment of um, this ordinance. The reason that we, and we will also be asking for passage on that night, and the reason for the um, urgency in this is that the new ordinance um, to be aligned with the state ordinance uh, law is that we, people can now um, ignite these fireworks from July 29th through or June 29th through July 5th. And in order to get this in alignment before then, we need to act on this on June 24th. So with that, I would move that we set the public hearing for um, June 24th regarding the amendments to this ordinance. All right, we have that. And um, Lisa, if you could fill the public in on the date changes um, that, that we uh, we'll be looking at. Sure. Our current ordinance um, allows for consumer fireworks the day preceding, the day of, and the day after a national holiday. With the change in the state law, um, they, the state articulated specific dates that consumers can shoot off fireworks, those being December 31st until 1 a.m. on January 1st, the Saturday and Sunday immediately preceding Memorial Day until 11.45 p.m. on each of those days, June 29th to July 4th until 11.45 p.m. on each of those days. July 5th, if that date is a Friday or Saturday, until 11.45 p.m. And the Saturday and Sunday immediately preceding Labor Day until 11.45 p.m. on each of those dates. The state also um, allowed for an increase in the fine amount. Uh, it's a civil infraction of $1,000. What we will be having is an actual reduction of the number of days that fireworks can be shot off in the city of Lansing. The problem is, is over the 4th of July holiday season, there is the potential of six to seven days, depending on where the um, 5th of July um, lands that you could have continuous fireworks during that time. Um, we have no ability to make any changes in what the state law has on the books. 
um, we either adopt what they have or have no ordinance, which would mean no enforcement. Councilmember Washington. Thank you, Madam President. I was just going to explain oh, that. I, no, that's fine. Just as long as it's out there that we have to do this or we will have no ordinance whatsoever. We realize this has been a hot topic for a number of people over you know, an issue. We do encourage, um, as Councilmember um, Washington said during the Committee of a Whole, that people reach out to their legislators because that's where these changes um, it can happen. It's not something that we can um, change. So um, with that, are there any other questions or comments? Seeing none, uh, we have a uh, motion to set the public hearing for the 24th. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Uh, passes unanimously. Thank you. Okay, so that takes us to speaker registration for public comment on city government related matters. For anyone would like to speak on city government related matters, you have one minute to sign in on the yellow sheet if you not have already done so. And then we are to reports of city officer boards and commissions, communications, petitions, and other city related matters. Uh, Vice President Spadafore. Madam President, I move that all items be considered as being read in full and that the proper referrals be made by you. Um, are there any questions? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Passes unanimously. Thank you. Okay, we have letters from the city clerk, minutes of boards and commissions. Authority is placed on file with the clerk's office. Placed on file. Lansing Board of Water and Light, fiscal year 2020 budget and capital improvement plan for fiscal year 2020 to 2025. Uh, committee of a whole and internal auditor. We have a permanent zoning of newly annexed property on South Waverly Road. Development and Planning Committee. Uh, fiscal year, year 2019 budget amendments. Committee of a whole and internal auditor. The appointment of Aaron Milton as an at-large member of the Board of Police Commissioners. Public Safety. We have the appointment of Joseph Graves as a third board member of the Lansing Board and Water and Light Board. Committee of a whole. We have the reappointment of Ken Ross as an at-large um, member of the Lansing Board of Water and Light. Wyatt Lundman as the at-large member of the Fire Board. Sandra Thompson Walk as a third ward member of the Board of Police Commissioners. Uh, committee of a whole. We have a sole source purchase of the Lansing Police Department. Request for Thermo Scientific Inc. as a vendor for the purchase of the True Narc Substance Testing Device. Ways and means an internal auditor. We have communication petitions. Uh, notice from the Liquor Control Commission transfer of an escrow SDM license for Budeter Car located at 1200 West Willow Street. Uh, general services. We have communication from Paul Gentilzadi, president of Gentilzadi Real Estate, concerning development project at 5400 South Cedar Street. Development and planning. And communication from former Lansing Mayor and City Council President Tony Benavides, thanking City Council for the recent recognition. Placed on file. Then we have our late item. And then we have the late item is the um, fireworks for July 5th. Uh, application and that would go to general services okay, so motion of excuse absences um, vice president Spadafore uh, I move to excuse council members Dunbar and Spitzley from this evening's meeting I have a motion are there any questions or concerns seeing none all those in favor say aye aye opposed passes um, unanimously Okay, we're next to remarks by city council members. Are there any remarks by council members? Seeing none. Okay, remarks by the mayor or executive assistant. Um, executive assistant, do we have any comments? Seeing none. Okay, then public comment and city government related matters. We have here first is Loretta Stanaway. Okay. Okay, Mary Reynolds. And is Tanya Azolda? No. And it concludes. All Have right. Comment. With that, we are adjourned.